said. Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. We're asking, Lord, that you allow your spirit to apply the word, give the word to your every heart, and everyone will benefit tremendously in Jesus' name. Let your grace be abundant upon every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Consider we're coming to Daniel chapter 4. We'll be studying from Daniel chapters 1, 2, and 3. And now we come to chapter 4. Tonight we're looking at the message, Prophetic Revelation, concerning a proud monarch, a proud king, and all proud men. We're looking at Daniel chapter 4. We're studying from verse 1 to verse 27. But I want to come to the latter part of this passage, verse 24. In verse 24, it says this is the interpretation of king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the King. In verse 25, it says that they shall drive the Nebuchadnezzar from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. And seven times, that means seven years, shall pass over thee, till thou know, till thou know. Here was the purpose of the dream. Here was the purpose of the chastisement. Here was the purpose of the discipline, divine discipline. Here was the purpose of the rebuke concerning the king. He was proud, and days will come upon him until he will know that the most high rulers in the kingdom of men. And the Lord give that kingdom to whosoever he will. Come to Jeremiah chapter 50. We're looking at verse 31. In Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 31, Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, says the Lord God of hosts, for thy day is come the time that I will visit thee. The reason why the Lord chastised uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar and revealed a dream to him that this was coming before it ever happened, the reason was that he was proud, not just moderately proud, he was exceedingly proud. And the Lord referred to him as thou most proud. In verse 32, verse 32, and the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all round about him. Today we're looking at this dream, at the revelation that became prophetic. It was a dream, it was a revelation, it was something uh, prophetic. It had not happened, it was going to happen. And God gave this to him uh, as prophecy, prophetic revelation concerning uh, the proud monarch, concerning you know, all proud men. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, uh, the dream uh, from uh, the most high to the most Proud. And then number two is the devastation by the most high for men's pride. Men's pride. In number three, we're looking at the decree of the most high without meaningful penitence. That is, this decree will not be changed except there is repentance. But without repentance, without penitence, this decree was firm. It was going to be fulfilled. Let's come to number one. Number one is the dream from the most high for the most proud. 
and it's in Daniel chapter 4, reading from verse 1 all through to verse 9. It says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, nations and the languages that dwell in all the in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. He gave this praise, this section, he started with this after he had gone through the divine chastisement, after he had gone through everything that the Lord had prophesied and predicted and revealed as a dream that will come upon him. It had come upon him, and now after he was humiliated and humbled, and then it became normal in the sight of the Lord, he now prays the name of the Lord. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, I thought it good to show the signs and the wonders that the high God has wrought toward me. The sign, what happened to him that never happened to any man on earth. The chastisement and the discipline and the humiliation that happened to him. He counted that as the signs and the wonders. He became deranged. He became devastated. He became totally destroyed. And the Lord raised him up again. And he said, those are the wonders and those are the signs that the Lord wrought toward me. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, it says, how great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders and his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion from generation to generation look at verse 4 it says in verse 4 Nebuchadnezzar was addressed in my house and flourishing in my palace and then in verse 5 it says I saw a dream which made me afraid can you think of Nebuchadnezzar that tyrant, that despot, becoming afraid. The Lord showed him the dream. And even though he did not know the full meaning of the dream, he became afraid and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me, tortured me, tormented me, made me so afraid. I didn't know what the end and the purpose of this would be. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, therefore made I a decree to bring in all the men of Babylon before me that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Bad habits thy heart. And people do not plan their lessons and they do the same thing over and over again. He had had a dream in chapter 2. He called all these astrologers, astronomers. He called all these magicians and all the wise men of Babylon, the Chaldeans. They could not interpret the dream. Now, he has another dream and he had not learned his lesson. He called them again of because it was the dream from God. And the people do not have God. They do not know God. They do not abide in God. They couldn't interpret what the Almighty God, the Most High God, had revealed. Of course, they failed in verse 7. It says in verse 7, Then came in the magicians and the astrologers and the Chaldeans and, and the soothsayers. And I told the dream before them about they did not, they could not, they would not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. Look at verse 8, in verse 8, but all, but at the last Daniel came. Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the Holy Ghost. And before him, I told the dream, saying, look at verse 9, in verse 9, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, at the teeth, the hedge, it was much above them, and they referred to, you have a mastery 
of uh, what you do. You have a mastery of interpretation. And it's your special, your special gift that you could do what the magicians were not able to do. Oh, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. And no secret troubles thee. It has troubled me. It will not trouble you. It has tormented and tortured me. But I know it will not torment or torture you. No secret troubles thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Uh, we're dividing this to three parts. Number one, Nebuchadnezzar's pride against God before his divine discipline. This is not human discipline. This is not kingdom. It's kingdom disciplining him. This is not his cabinet, his people, and his supporters saying, this is too much. You've gone too far. Disciplining him, this is divine. And this is coming from God. God has given us conscience. And when we don't listen to our conscience, our neighbors might become bold and, and confront us. When we don't listen to our, our, our community, our people, the council, eventually as we go on and on, and we harden our heart, and we steepen our necks, and we're incorrigible by our conscience, the policeman that lives inside us, and we're not corrigible by the community or by the laws of the land. Eventually, God himself will bring the discipline. We refer to that as divine discipline. Number two is praise of God for his deathless dominion. It says the dominion of God is forever and ever. It has no beginning. It is deathless and it is forever. The praise of God for his deathless dominion. Number three, the punishment from God for defiant deification. He made himself like God. He was the final authority. He had the final say. He, he the kind of deified himself, made himself a God, and the punishment from God came upon him for his defiant deification. Look at number one. Number one is the Nebuchadnezzar's pride against the God, against the God of heaven, before his divine discipline. Daniel chapter 3, reading from verse 15. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 15, it says, Now, if you be ready, that at what time ye hear the, the, the sound of the cornet and the flute and the harp, and the sad bird, and sad tree, and do seamen, and the all kinds of music. If you fall down and worship the image that I have made, well, I'll forget the past. I will just see that you took a foolish decision not to worship my God. Then he said, but if you worship not my image, he shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the bony, furry bodies. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? You see his defiance? Do you see his pride saying, Who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand. In Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 16, it tells us there, Thy terribleness has deceived thee, and the pride of thine heart, O thou that dwellest at the cliffs of the rock, that holdest the height of the hill, though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle. I, the almighty God, will bring thee down from thence, says the Lord. Uh, that, that's the portion of the pride 
They think they are so high, no hand can touch them. They think they are so high, they are above and beyond the law. They are above and beyond the Lord. They can do anything. They can say anything. They can go anywhere. And they can act anything out. They believe that no hand can touch them like Nebuchadnezzar. That's how he believed. That's how he thought. And that's the way he positioned himself. And the Lord said, even though you go higher than the eagle yet, I'll bring you to Habakkuk chapter 2, reading from verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. In verse 5, verse 5 says, Ye also, because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home and who enlarges his desire as hell. He enlarges his desire. He grabs this. He conquers this. He goes after this. And he says, I am a go-getter. It belongs to me. It doesn't belong to me. I get it. It is mine or it is not mine. I go after it. And he said, nobody can do anything. Go anywhere you want to go. Everything will still come to my side. It says, enlarges his desires is as dead. And he cannot be satisfied. But he gathereth unto him all nations. That's Nebuchadnezzar. And that's the attitude of people like Nebuchadnezzar. And he fares unto him all people. Let's look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at his praise of God for his deathless dominion. Eventually, you remember, the reason why the divine discipline came upon him is so that he will know that the most high rulers in the kingdom of men. And eventually, after the discipline, after the derangement, after the mental problem, after eating grass like animal, and then he says this came back to him and he said, I've been proud. And everyone that is proud, the Lord can reduce them to nothing because he is the God of heaven. It's now the praise he gave to God after he knew that God rules in the affairs of men. His praise of God for his deathless dominion. We're looking at uh, Daniel chapter 4. I'm looking at verse 1. It says in verse 1 here, it says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, all nations, all languages, is blasphemy had gone to all nations, is blasphemy had gone to all people, is pride had been known by all people now. The praise also must go to all the nations, the people that knew you as a sinner, they should know you now as a child of God. The people that knew you when you were worldly, when you were proud, when you were evil, now that you are born again, now that you have changed, and now that a new life has come, they should know everywhere your sin troubled you in the past, your saintliness must travel there now. And because of that, he said, now to all nations and all languages that dwell on the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. A man of violence, a man of fury, a man of fire, a man of the furnace, fiery furnace. Now conversion has come. A change has come. And the change now, instead of violence, instead of fighting, instead of evil, he said, peace be unto you. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, I thought it good to show the signs and the wonders that the most high God has wrought toward me. And then in verse 3 it tells us about God now, how great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom 
and his dominion. He is from generation to generation. The word of God tells us in Daniel chapter 7, I'm looking at verse 13. Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. It's about God. It's about his greatness. It's about his deathless dominion and authority. I saw in the night visions and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. Then in verse 14, in verse 14 it says, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion and which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. The same thing that the Kadnezah said, other people said, other people that had revelation of the Lord, they knew that the kingdom of God is from generation to generation, his dominion is from generation to generation, it has no beginning and it has no end forever and ever did bless dominion. Look at number three. Number three, we're looking at the punishment from God for defiant deification. That he is the uh, Nebuchadnezzar that made himself a god. Nebuchadnezzar that said, it's me and none else. I take the final decision. I say whatever I want to say. And I rule over every life and everyone. Not even the God of heaven could hinder or stop him. That's what he thought. That's what he thought. He made himself a God. And he was defiant. He was disobedient. He was adamant. And he would not lose it to anyone. But now we see the punishment from God. God for such personalities. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12. How art thou falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou caught down to the ground, which deeds weaken the nations? Actually, Nebuchadnezzar had the nature of Satan, of Lucifer, because it was Lucifer that started the project of weakening the nations. In verse 13, verse 13 says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Then in verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be, I will be Lucifer, I will be Nebuchadnezzar, I will be, and the people that defy themselves, I will be like the most high. Then in verse 15, verse 15 says, Yea, thou shalt be brought down to hell and to the sides of the pit. The punishment of God is sure for the people who are proud, for the people who exalt themselves, for the people who nullify God, and they want to sit and stand in the place of God. They want to take God away from the hearts of other people. They want to take the authority of God, the power of God, away from other people, and they want to set themselves to be the ultimate. Ezekiel chapter 28 we're looking at a verse 12. Ezekiel 28, verse 12, Son of man, take a lamentation upon the king of Tyre and say unto him, Thus says the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. There are people because of their wisdom, that's why they are proud, because of their beauty, because of their appearance, that's why they are proud. Because of their possession, that's why they are proud. Because of their position in life, that's why they are proud. And 
the Lord has dealt with such people. Oh, before there is nothing new under the sun. If anybody is proud anywhere, it had happened to all the people before, and God spoke to them, and God performed his miracle of divine discipline on them. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, thou hast been in Eden, the guardian of God. is switching over now to Lucifer. is switching over now to the old serpent. And then it says uh, uh, that uh, give every precious stone was thy covering. Uh, Sardis and topaz and, and diamond and the burial and the onyx and the and the jasper and the sapphire and the sapphire and the emerald and the carbuncle all these uh, colorful precious things and gold upon him around him that's why it was called the workmanship of the tablet and then it goes on to say thy pipes was thy pipe was prepared in thee and in the day that thou was created you must still understand wherever you are whether you are the king of Tyre or you are Nebuchadnezzar or you are Lucifer or you are whatever you're still a created being and you're still a creator and as the maker is greater than what is made as the manufacturer is greater than what is manufactured the creator is greater than what is created we have no right and we have nothing to make us proud he tells us in verse 14 in verse 14 thou art the anointed cherub that cover it and i have said thee so i have said thee so will you then be proud against the one who has created you, who has set you so, who has appointed you. He said, I have said thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. In verse 15, it says, Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created still understand still understand wherever we are whatever we have wherever we have been and, and whatever we possess we're still created he created us and therefore we have no reason at all and we have no right to be proud against the one who has created us till iniquity was found in thee it tells us in verse 16 in verse 16, it says, By the multitude of thy merchandise, they filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. It says, Therefore, I will cast thee down as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, I from the midst of the stones of fire. Verse 17, verse 17 says, Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Think of yourself. Because of thy beauty. Because of thy riches. Because of your achievement. Because of your contacts. Because of where you are being, where you can be, and who you can talk to. Therefore, your heart is lifted up. Think about what makes you proud, if you are proud. Think about what makes you belittle others. Look down on others, if you do that. And understand that God is watching. And the Lord will bring punishment upon everyone that is defiant and disobedient in exalting himself or herself. I will cast thee down to the ground. I will lay thee before the kings that they may behold thee. Then in verse 18, verse 18 says, Thou hast defiled thy sanctuary is by the multitude of thine iniquities. It says, therefore, will I bring forth 
the fire from the midst of thee, and it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the midst of all them that behold thee. And this is the reason why the Lord is very careful in dealing with us. Sometimes a new convert wants to be this, an inexperienced person wants to be that, a person who has not been called wants to be here or there. And if God allows that, the pride may come and the pride may ruin and destroy that person. Look at First Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. It says, as we're, as we're appointing leaders, as we're appointing overseers, regional or for nation, anywhere, as we're putting people in place, it says, not in novice, not somebody who's just converted and then you make him a pastor, you make him a bishop, you make him a prophet, not somebody who just came into the kingdom and then you make him to be ruling over thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. It says not a novice, somebody who doesn't have experience in the Lord, somebody who doesn't have a standing, steadfast relationship with the Lord, somebody who is just looking for a position to grab, who is looking for opportunity to control and rule over people, domineering. It says, not a novice less, being lifted up with pride. Lifted up with pride. He falls into the condemnation of the devil. He falls into the same condemnation that the devil fell into. That's the reason why in the church, in the ministry, in the fellowship, and we, you know, watch people, if they get into pride and they're defiant and they're disobedient and they're uncontrollable because pride rules them, that pride will destroy them. Therefore, we mercifully take away from them that thing that will bring the condemnation, the same condemnation of the devil that will bring the hate upon them. We're looking at point number two here. Point number two, we're looking at the devastation by the most high for man's pride. For man's pride. We're looking at Daniel chapter 4. We're reading from verse 10. Daniel chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 10. Thus were the visions of my head in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The Lord showed him a tree in the dream, and that tree was actually a picture of Nebuchadnezzar, a picture of how he had grown, of how he had become so mighty, and then his uh, personality and his position was known all over the world. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, and the tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, reached unto the skies, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. Everybody had information about him. Everybody had knowledge of him, this man, this king, this monarch that had grown so much that the information about him, have you heard about Nebuchadnezzar? Who oh, would not have heard about Nebuchadnezzar? Is that the great king of Babylon? Is that that Yes, everybody was, you know, talking about him. And then in verse 12, it says in verse 12, the leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in each was meat for all. He satisfied all the beasts of the field, a shadow under each, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the bowls uh, thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. You know, everybody depended on him. And, you know, if they will feed, if they have anything, you know, they have to get it from the head, the king, the leader of Babylon. In verse 13, in verse 13, it says, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a water and an holy one came down from heaven. 
heaven rules the earth. And no matter who you are, and no matter who we are on earth, heaven rules the earth. A watcher watching, heaven watches our lives. Heaven watches our attitude. Heaven watches the pride of people. Heaven watches the program of people, the plan of people, the project of people. Heaven watches the decision and the thoughts of men on earth. A watcher and holy one came down from heaven. And then in verse 14, it says, he cried out loud and said thus, Heal down, cut down the tree. This tall tree, cut it down. This proud tree, cut it down. There is a tree with many branches and with many leaves and many fruits. There is a tree that rises up and grows up to heaven and touches everywhere. And the shadow of being so much that every beast and every man comes to take shelter under that tree, cut it down. Heal down the tree and cut off his branches and shake off his leaves and scatter his fruits. Let the bees get away from under it and the fowls from its branches. And then in verse 15, it says, Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots. And uh, it says, in the earth, even with a bunch of iron and brass in the tender grass of the, of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, that is, take shelter away from him, take covering away from him. Let him be in the open field, and let him be degraded, deranged, and let him be less than a human being. It says, let the deal wet him from heaven, and let his portion be with the beast of the grass of the earth. And then in verse 16, it tells us, and let his heart be changed from man's heart, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. That is, let him be driven to the field. Let his brain be changed. Let his sight be changed. Let his understanding be changed. Let his discernment be changed. Let his heart, the, the cognitive, the, the one that knows right from wrong, what to eat and not to eat, let all that change, that he will feed on grass in the open like animals until seven times, seven seasons, seven years pass over him. And then in verse 17, verse 17 says, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the watch of the holy ones to the intent for the purpose that the living may know that the most high rulers in the kingdom of men and giveth ye to whomsoever he will. What hast thou that you have not been given? What position do you have? What prosperity do you have? What popularity do you have? What portion do you have of anything on earth here that God had not given you? If God has given you, why are you boasting? Why are you proud? Why are you exalted as if God has not given to you? And the Lord wanted this punishment and this discipline on him until he will know that the most high rulers in the kingdom of men and give a seed to whomsoever he will and set it up over it the basest of men. He sets up. The basis of men is not because you are, you know, so clean and so good and so mighty in yourself, so wise in yourself. He set it up, the basis of all men. And then in verse 18, verse 18 says, This dream that King Nebuchadnezzar 
have seen now thou O Beshazzar Daniel declare the interpretation thereof for as much as all wise men the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation but thou art able for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. We're dividing this section to very parts. Number one, the description of the dream of the proud monarch. Number two, the downfall and the dethronement of the proud man. Number three, the depression and disgrace of the proud maniac. Number one is the description of the dream of the proud monarch. We have read the text already. A look at Psalm 37. And we are looking at verse 35. I have seen the wicked in great power. I have seen the wicked. And the psalmist says, I am not surprised. I am not surprised that wicked man having all that prosperity, all that pomp and everything. I have seen that. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. The tree is representing the man, the man in his pride, the man in his deification, the man in his authority, the man in his incorrigible stage on earth, saying, look at who I am. If I wasn't born again, will I have this? If I wasn't righteous, will I have this okay? You say you are righteous, you say you are holy, and you say that you belong to God as a peculiar person. How much do you have? What authority do you have? What connections do you have? But look at me now. The riches do not say, do not show that you are not a heathen, a pagan. An unbeliever, a sinner, on his way to hell, if you don't repent, I have seen the wicked in great power, in great honor, and spreading himself like a green bear tree. Look at verse 36. In verse 36, yet he passes away, and lo, he was not, yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. It doesn't last. Riches without righteousness, it don't last. Power without purity, it doesn't last. And you do not have any partnership with the Lord. And you do not have any place in the kingdom of God. If all you have is all the gold and the silver, the currency and the money and all that, that thing doesn't last. How many years are you going to enjoy that? If you're a wicked man, if you're an unsaved man, an unsaved woman, it says ye, he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but could not be found. And look at Isaiah chapter 10, and we're reading from verse 33. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall love and the bow weighs terror, and the high ones and the of a stature shall be hewn down, cut down, and the haughty shall be humbled. In verse 34, verse 34 says, And he shall cut down the thickest of the forest with iron, and Lebanon shall fall by a mighty one. Look at number two here. Number two is the downfall and the dethronement of the proud man. We've read about that in Daniel chapter 4 verses 13 to 15. Look at uh, uh, Matthew chapter 3 in verse 10. Here is the word of the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ John the Baptist and he was speaking from uh, God from heaven. It says, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of, of the trees. Not only one tree, Nebuchadnezzar, all the trees, the axe is laid on the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree 
which bringeth forth not good fruit is cut down, is hewn down and cast into the fire. Well, we're looking at Jeremiah chapter 51 and we're reading from verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 6, it says, Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not caught up in her iniquity. That is, do not get involved with pride, pride in the heart, pride in the mind, pride in the attitude, pride in the look, pride in the appearance, looking down on every other person and say, they are rats, but he is the lion, he is the elephant. It says so that we are not caught up in our iniquity, but this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her, it says, a recompense. Look at verse 9. In verse 9 it says, we would have healed Babylon. We would have counseled Babylon. We would have converted Babylon. We would have turned Babylon around. But it says, but she's not healed. She will not listen to any message, any exhortation. She will not listen to any counseling. She will not listen to the message from on high that he should repent and turn. He could have been healed. He could have been turned around. If he had dropped the pride, if he had dropped the self-exaltation, but he could not be healed, forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country for her judgment reaches unto heaven and he is lifted up even to the skies. We're looking at number three here. Number three is the depression and disgrace of a proud maniac. We've read Daniel chapter 4 verse 16 to verse 18. Now, look at Isaiah chapter 26, reading from verse 9. But my soul, have I desired thee in the night? Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. Look at this. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Nebuchadnezzar waited until the judgment came. The favor that God showed him, the victory, the triumph, the conquering, he conquered many nations, and it was God that gave him the victory. All that did not turn his heart to God. The good interpretation in chapter 2 that Daniel had given him, the great miracle of preserving Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire in chapter 3, all that did not change him. Even the counsel, the exhortation of Daniel that he should break off his sin by showing mercy, by repenting and turning around, all that did not change him, but when thy judgments are in the earth, then the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. The rebuke of men that will not change them, and the chastisement of men that will not change them, and the opinions of men, people who are bold enough to confront them and say, hey, this is wrong, and this will not earn you honor or respect from heaven. All that will not change them. A man of God may come to Eli and tell him why. Have you exalted your children above me? And then they made the sacrifice of the Lord to be detested by people. That will not change them until the judgment came upon them. It says when the judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Look at verse 10. In verse 10 it says, Let favor be shown to the wicked, who is not born again, who is not converted. Show him favor, show her favor, and make, you know, everything that, you know, anyone could give, give to them. It says, Let favor be shown to the wicked, 
yet will he not learn righteousness in the land of uprightness he will deal unjustly and he will not behold the majesty of the lord in ezekiel chapter 25 verse 17 ezekiel 25 verse 17 and i will execute great vengeance I am upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall lay my vengeance upon them. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, the decree of the Most High without meaningful penitence. That is, if there is no penitence, if there is no repentance, the decree of the Most High is sure and definite. We're coming to Daniel chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 19. Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at verse 19. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour when he heard the dream related and retold by Nebuchadnezzar. He knew the meaning. He knew that something was coming in upon King Nebuchadnezzar. He was astonished for one hour and, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar, it says, answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee. Well, that's the normal thing to say when uh, this will not be for you. This will be for your enemy. Uh, that is why people say, if somebody is saying, can you say, Hello, how are you? Um, from your voice, are you sick? You say, no. My, tell me, my enemy is sick. Anything, um, you know, disturb me. Ah, no, I'm okay. It's my enemy that something is disturbing. That, that's the language here. That's what they are saying here. It says, let it be for thine enemy. And it says, unto them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. Let's look at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the faithful interpreter of the decree of the Most High. Look at Daniel. Daniel knew the interpretation. He loved the king. He wanted to favor the king, but he will not change the interpretation of the dream, of the decree, of the doctrine, of the word. We shall be like Daniel, that whatever the interpretation is, and whatever the congregation we have before us, we are faithful interpreters of the word of God. It will disturb them, be faithful. It will make them unhappy, be faithful. All the same, whatever they feel, however they look at, at it, this word, this doctrine is the decree of the Most High and the interpreter must be faithful every time. Look at number two, the frightening interpretation of the dream from the Most High. Number three, the fervent instruction of Daniel for the Most haughty. This proud man, this haughty man, this self-exalting man. The word came from Daniel, and Daniel gave him instruction, exhortation, as to how to deal with this situation so that he'll be reconciled to God and the punishment will not fall upon him. Look at number one. Number one is the faithful interpreter of the decree of the Most High. In Daniel chapter 4, reading from verse 19, it tells us in verse 19, then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. 
And the king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, the tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, verse 21, in verse 21, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, and under which the bees of the field dwell, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. In verse 22, it is thou, O king, thou art the tree, thou art the man, thou art the king. What fullness and what courage, if anyone is going to preach the word of God, you must have the boldness and the courage. If you don't have the boldness to say what God wants to be said, then don't enter into the ministry yet. Wait until you, what's the news? You're a messenger. Hear the message. And the Almighty God gives the message to the so called messenger. And he doesn't have the boldness, he doesn't have the courage to tell the message, to tell the people the message of the Lord. He's, uh, you know, timid, he's fearful, he's afraid of the faces of people. He cannot tell the sinner, except you repent, you will perish. He cannot tell the church goer, except the righteousness shall exceed. The righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees you will in no wise get into the kingdom of God. It's a slave to the face of the people. It's a slave to the terror of the people. How can you be a messenger if you're going to be a messenger to carry the message of the Most High to the world and to any congregation? Here is what you ought to have. The faithfulness that makes you uh, bold and courageous. It is thou, O king, thou art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reaches unto heaven, and thy dominion to the ends of the earth. And we're looking at First Corinthians chapter four, reading from verse one. In First Corinthians chapter four, verse one, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ, ministers of Christ. We're not ministers of ourselves. We're not uh, ministers of our own opinion. We're not ministers of our own ideology. We're the ministers of Christ, the Savior. And he has shown the way to be saved. And he has shown that if anybody remains a sinner and dies a sinner, he will go to hell and perish forever and ever. But if we're going to declare the message of Christ, it is, why will you die, O Israel? I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Turn you, turn you, so that you will not die. God is not like concerning his promise, but his long suffering, he towards us. He wants all men to come to repentance and faith in the Lord. Paul the apostle said, I've not uh, taken away from you, I've not shielded away from you. I've not deprived you of everything I want to tell you about repentance toward God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, let him mount to account of us as ministers of Christ, see what's of the mysteries of God. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 he says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. If you're going to be a pastor, that a man be found faithful. If you're going to be a minister, that a man, a woman be found 
out faithful. If you're going to be a proclaimer of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, to reconcile people to God and to make them escape the hell and the devastation, destruction, and the separation all eternity awaiting sinners. If you're going to be the messenger of the Lord, it is required that a man, a woman, a worker, a preacher, a proclaimer, an evangelist be found faithful. It tells us in First Thessalonians, reading there from chapter 2, uh, first time chapter 2, we're looking at uh, verse 3. It says, For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, But as we were at large of God, as we were permitted of God, as we were chosen by God to be put in trust with the gospel. Even so we speak not as pleasing men. Not as pleasing men. There, there may be men, there may be women that will want you uh, to rather exalt them rather than exalt Christ. That rather will want you to gloss over the sin that make people to perish and to go to hell. They don't want you to mention that because it's their dainty sin, it's their peculiar sin. But if you're a preacher and you're going to be faithful, if you're going to be a Daniel today in front of Nebuchadnezzar, you will speak not as pleasing men, but pleasing God, which tries our hearts. Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at the frightening interpretation of the dream from the most high. In Daniel chapter 4 verse 23, it tells us, it says, and whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, heal down cut the tree down and destroy it yet leave the storm of the roots thereof in the earth even with a bunch of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his Portion be with the beast of the field until seven times pass over him. Look at the next verse, verse 24. In verse 24, this in, in the interpretation of King, this is the decree of the Most High. It's a decree. It's not a wish. It's not an idea. It's not an opinion. It's not a suggestion. This is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the King. And then in verse 25, it says that they shall drive thee, Nebuchadnezzar, from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wedge thee with the dew of heaven in the open. And then it says, and seven times seven years shall pass over thee till thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whosoever he will. Verse 26, in verse 26, and whereas they commanded to leave the storm of the tree roots. Thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee after, after, after thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. We come to Isaiah chapter 13, verse 11. The frightening interpretation, the punishment that comes upon a proud monarch, a proud man. A proud maniac. It says in Isaiah chapter 13, verse 11, 
and I will punish the world, not only Nebuchadnezzar, and I will punish the world, not only Herod, not only Pharaoh, and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity anywhere, everywhere, in any generation. And I will cause the arrogancy and the haughtiness of the proud to cease and when they know the haughtiness of the terrible. It tells us in Proverbs chapter 16, reading there from verse 5, it says in verse 5, everyone, every, everyone, anywhere, everyone, anytime, everyone, for whatever reason they are proud, everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. That is, he will be punished. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, pride goes before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. We're looking at number three here. Number three, the perfect instruction of Daniel to the most haughty. Here Daniel, after the interpretation, now gave an exhortation, an instruction, what to do so that this calamity might still be avoided. It says in Daniel chapter 4 verse 27, it says 